Bangor. From the great Northwoods to the Rockbound Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, the state police are trying to reunite stolen property with the owners following a bust in northern Maine. Plus, those extra SNAP benefits are coming to an end now that the pandemic is over. And researchers say this could be the worst season for brown tail moths on record. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I forgot what I was saying. I'm Emma Smith. <laughs> I think I'm Craig Colson. I'm not sure. It's, it's been one of those weeks here. I was thinking yeah. I was thinking about something that I had to tell you afterwards and, and everything. All right. Well, we'll do this first and then we'll, then we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're ready to start. Thank you for joining us, everyone, on this Friday morning. Um, the weather, I think, is going to be the big story of the day today. It's not nothing uh, major going on out there right now, but we're expecting a wintry mix as the day rolls along, starting any time now, if it hasn't already. I was looking at some of the live cameras earlier, and it's already snowing in places like Greenville. Oh, really? Um, so it's going to be a slippery day. I know a lot of schools have already canceled for the day, which really? might surprise yeah. you because there's really nothing on the road yet, but it's, yep. it's supposed to be just icky later on. So Probably later on, you'll want to stay off the roads. Yep, good point. Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Friday. Your first weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Alrighty, here we are. Active weather moving in. We have winter storm warnings. I was kind of wondering they would upgrade some of this to a winter storm warning in the northern ends of the state, and they have, and this is up until about 10 p.m. for accumulating snow and some ice as well. Winter weather advisories also posted until 10 p.m. for these areas here. Also for ice, that will be moving in, and a little bit of snow along the coast. We also have small craft advisories and gale warnings posted until Saturday morning at about 7 a.m. or so for winds that will be moving in. For now, we're quiet, and that's not going to stay that way. We're going to be watching for that winter mix that will be filling in as the morning progresses on. So we're in that quiet stretch now with snow in the northern ends of the state. But we're watching the precipitation starting to fill in from the southwest to the north and east. So as the morning progresses on, we'll be watching this all beginning to fill in. So by about 9 to 10 o'clock, this will all get going and switch over to snow during the afternoon period. By early evening, we'll start to see this taper off and the sky clearing out overnight tonight with a lot of sunshine to start things off for your Saturday. So your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. So a lot of this gets going by about 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning with temperatures in the 30s. So the precipitation will become frozen by the afternoon period as temperatures fall. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. If you were the victim of a burglary or a theft in the St. John Valley in the last year, authorities may have some good news. Since the spring of 2020, multiple law enforcement agencies have been investigating reports of burglaries and thefts. They say suspects were developed and they have a, recovered a large amount of stolen property. If you were a victim, whether reported or not, police ask that you go to the Fort Kent Police Department at 416 West Street between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. on February 20th. Law enforcement will be there to speak with you and help you identify your property. Well, a convicted child molester will spend more than 20 years in prison after being found guilty of sexually assaulting a child under the age of 12. 40-year-old Corey Farley of St. Albans was arrested in August of 2021 and charged with gross sexual assault and unlawful sexual contact. Officials say the assaults took place over several months in 2020. During a court hearing earlier this week, Farley was ordered to serve 23 years in prison. According to the Morning Sentinel, he'll also be on lifetime supervision and must register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. The Hancock County Sheriff's Office is investigating a snowmobile crash that left one person seriously injured. Lieutenant Tim Cody says 23-year-old Isaiah Reynolds was driving a snowmobile on the Bayview Road in Penobscot just after 7 Wednesday night when it went off the right side of the road. Cody says the snowmobile went into a ditch, rolled over, and ejected Reynolds. He sustained life-threatening injuries. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. Another lawsuit filed against Maine's Catholic Diocese accuses a priest of sexual abuse decades ago. The complaint says Reverend Angelo Lavasser, who was a priest in Frenchville, took a boy in his early teens to a religious event in Quebec back in the early 1990s. Attorneys say Lavasser and the boys shared a hotel room where he gave the teen alcohol and encouraged him to take off his clothing. 
The alleged victim says Lavasser forced him into sexual contact, which left the boy shocked and confused. Upon returning home, Father Lavasser is alleged to have threatened the plaintiff with silence, basically saying that if you tell everyone or anyone, no one will believe you. When our client went to the diocese with his claim, he was refused and told that the diocese could not corroborate his claim. Diocese has not responded to requests for a comment. Attorney say Lavasser was assigned all over Maine during his time with the diocese from southern, central, and northern parts of the state. He died in 2009. This is the 14th lawsuit filed against the diocese recently after Maine overturned the statute of limitations on claims of sexual abuse, a law the diocese challenged and lost in court. Environmentalists and local advocates are celebrating a Maine Supreme Court decision that has major implications for a, pro a proposed fish farm in Belfast. The Maine Supreme Court ruled Nordic Aqua Farms does not rightfully own the land where the company had plans to build the large land-based salmon farm. In 2018, Nordic Aqua Farms announced plans to develop the salmon aquaculture facility in Belfast. The company made an agreement with landowners to bury industrial pipes in the intertidal land located between their property and Penobscot Bay. However, neighbors who were against the farm claimed that they owned part of the land where construction was planned. Thursday's ruling gave ownership rights to the neighbors opposing the fish farm, making the path ahead unclear for Nordic Aqua Farms. The Maine legislature has voted overwhelmingly to send a bipartisan supplemental budget plan to the governor's desk to be signed into law. The vote was 113 to 21 in the House, 24 to 5 in the Senate. According to a statement, the proposal ensures the state will meet all of its financial obligations and pay bills through the end of the fiscal year. A supplemental budget is an adjustment to the 2021-2023 biennial state budget to ensure Maine abides by its constitutionally mandated balanced budget law. Senate President Troy Jackson said, quote, now the Appropriations Committee can really dig into that biennial budget to craft a two-year proposal that makes key investments for working families, small businesses, and rural communities. During the pandemic, low-income individuals and families in Maine were getting extra money to buy food each month on their EBT cards. But now that pandemic boost and SNAP benefits is ending, Brad Rogers has the story. With the extra pandemic benefits, Danette Killinger got $516 a month on her EBT card to buy food for her and her disabled adult son. She says next month it drops to just 26 bucks. $26. That's a big drop. There it is. My son's disabled and he, you know, eats a lot. <laughs> He's a grown man. And we both live on 914 a month. Congress authorized the additional SNAP payments on a temporary basis to help low-income people and families deal with the hardships of the COVID-19 pandemic. But now Tina Coughlin and her disabled son, along with her elderly mother, will all lose hundreds of dollars in benefits. Hers is going to drop to $120. <laughs> For a whole month? For a whole month. We're going to struggle, and I think that a lot of the pantries are going to get overrun because people aren't going to be able to buy what they normally buy. Local food pantries are already bracing for the impact. It's going to be rough on a lot of families. We're seeing uh, a, a huge impact even with the increase of the cost of uh, groceries. Every Thursday, the South Portland Food Cupboard helps stock the shelves in the homes of dozens of families in need. People are walking away from here with 25 to 30 grocery bags full of groceries, including fresh produce. Yeah, you like what? What's it like? They're also open Tuesdays for people to get some groceries. Director Dwayne Hopkins says he can only imagine what the demand will be next month. But this is going to be an extra added impact, one that I think is going to be unprecedented. And it's going to call for, or call for a greater demand, a higher demand of food and volunteers. Because of the emergency funding, Killinger managed to avoid the food bank. Now she has no choice. I haven't been there in years, but we'll find out. Is this the time to be taking benefits away? No. No, absolutely not. It's definitely the worst possible time. That was Brad Rogers reporting. Moving on now, there is a demand for health care jobs and more than enough people willing to take them. The only problem, not enough professors to train them. That's according to Senator Susan Collins, who says more than 90,000 applications for nursing programs were turned away nationwide in 2021, mostly because of faculty shortages. 
in the Senate Health Committee yesterday. The president of the UN, uh, uh, UNE testified that the university is finding creative ways to bridge that gap, including having existing nurses train students on site. We're actually using the faculty on site, using nurses on site. We provide professional development and support from the university to have them train people on, on site in the Maine Health Hospitals. Senator Collins says UMaine had more than 1,000 applications this year for only 80 slots in its nursing program. She says she's working with others on the Senate Health Committee to look for solutions to the health care workforce shortage. Wow. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. say. All right, the time now is 6.10. And coming up next on Good Morning Maine, UMaine researchers say this could be a very bad season for brown tail moths. Luckily, there are some things you can do to help. But first, let's take another look at that weather forecast. A messy day ahead today. We can expect a wintry mix with highs near 34 degrees. A little evening snow tonight with lows around 8. Tomorrow, a much nicer day. A partly cloudy day ahead with highs near 30. When Cat Tracks in LaGrange wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Cat Tracks in LaGrange is your dealer for Hewitt Lifts and Rolodox with the goal to get you on the lake faster than anyone else. You could still feel the murder in the house. Why would you murder two innocent people? Two innocent women. Could the murder somehow be tied to interest in the occult? The stunning new 2020. She's about to break the case. Tonight at 9, 8 central on ABC. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovation supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. Steve Harvey powers the XT. If roles were reversed, what might the turkey do to you on Thanksgiving? Eat my drumstick. On Family Feud. On ABC7. I woke up with this overwhelming feeling to pick up a paintbrush and start painting. And so that's what I did, and this is what came out. We'll hear more about the Florida Highwaymen artists and the main painter working to keep their legacy alive. Monday on ABC 7 News at 6. Welcome back, everyone. Herman's DP Porter Contractors has been chosen to complete improvements to Dexter Regional Airport. Dexter Town Manager Trampus King says the new terminal building will cost roughly $1 million. Other planned improvements include paving and renovating the airport's driveways and parking areas. This comes after the Dexter Town Council agreed to acquire the nearby Dexter Auto Club in order to use that space as part of its new terminal building in October 2022. King says this investment will not only benefit the town, but also nearby areas. Well, they can go to surrounding areas, you know, they could get to Greenville and get to Bangor if they need to, and um, without dealing with the traffic at those airports. The regional airport was awarded $760,000 in federal funding this past summer to replace its current aviation terminal building. King says he expects construction to begin in May and wrap up in November. Experts at the University of Maine are anticipating the worst brown tail moth outbreak in over a century. But research is being conducted to see how damage can be mitigated. Devin Dagnall met with researchers to find out what can be done. A century has passed since brown tail moths were first introduced to Maine's ecosystem. And for those 100 years, experts have done what they could to keep the moths at bay. The forest entomology lab here at the University of Maine, a big component of our research is about brown tail moth. It is a, a large issue in the state um, and it hasn't quite reached other areas or other states. So it kind of is a main problem at the moment. The University of Maine's brown tail moth expert, Angela Mack, says she's anticipating the largest brown tail moth outbreak ever seen. However, PhD student Devin Rowe has been researching some of the moth's habits to see if Mainers can get a step ahead. We know the moth likes oak trees. We know they like fruit trees, like apple trees, but really trying to find that extent on their preferences. And because the University of Maine has a wide variety of hardwood trees, you kind of have a tree buffet. So throughout the years, we're going to 
try to see those changes. According to Roe, by knowing exactly what trees the moth prefers, diligent mainers will be able to keep an eye out for brown tail moth winter webs and dispose of them. Roe says to look for webs in hardwood trees on sunny days so you can see the shine of the silk around a bunch of leaves. According to Mech, if you're able to, you should remove the nest and dispose of it to help mitigate this year's brown tail moth outbreak. So in the winter time, they're all inside the nest and that's where all the toxic hairs are as well. So don't open the nests or mess with them. Uh, and you can clip them and put them in soapy water for a couple days. Uh, or if you're allowed to, you can also burn them. Um, and so basically trying to, to kill the nest once you clip them. In Orono, Devin Dagnall. ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Boy, get them now. They're miserable. I got into some of those the summer before last, and for a couple of weeks there, I was just, just hurting, yep. you know. You, you'll get your brown tail moth burning permit now. Yeah, I'm going to go get them. <laughs> so. I know. I hope I, I don't mix them up between other things, but I guess if I clip another nest, it's not going to be like monarch butterflies or, butterflies Kill them all, or something. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't, I, I don't think there's too much discrepancy yeah. is what I'm saying, though. Yeah. 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 Either way, there's trainings. I've seen them around. I put it in the community, community calendar last week, so yeah. keep an eye out. Great. The time now is 6.16. After the break, a local group of middle schoolers hit the ice yesterday, many learning how to ice fish for the very first time. We'll check out that and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Looking to haul a new piece of equipment? Homeowners or commercial, Coops Truck and Equipment has the right trailer for you. Coops is the largest dealer of truck flatbeds and hauler bodies in this state and can replace any old rusty bed or outfit any new truck. Our full service facility can modify all truck and trailers with steel and aluminum fabricators on duty. We are your go-to place for CM truck bodies, H&H trailers, and load trail trailers. For trailers, truck bodies, truck outfitting, and more, it's Coops. It is Tournament Time 2023, and ABC7 is your home for tournament coverage. Watch ABC7 News at 6 and 11 for all your highlights and interviews as our high school teams go for that gold ball. And get the latest high school bracket information at WVII.com. Tournament brackets are brought to you by Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer with 29 locations, owned and operated by a Maine family that cares, and Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A Holden, great quality furniture and Bangor's largest in-stock mattress selection, free statewide delivery. Max True Value Hardware in Unity is the best option year-round for all of your home improvement projects. Backed by one of the leading paint manufacturers in the United States, Max will color match or custom mix any color for you. We care about your pets too, carrying all of the essential pet products in our store. During those cold winters, we take the extra step to help with wood pellets ready to load on site. We also fill all size propane cylinders year-round. Max True Value Hardware, we take pride in serving our community. Let us know how we can help you today. Welcome back, everyone. Well, around 100 Milford Middle Schoolers got to take part in a main tradition, and for many, it was a new experience. Our David Ledford reeled in the story. First catch of the day. Good job! Thursday morning, Milford Middle Schoolers from Dr. Lewis S. Libby School hit the frozen waters on Pickerel Pond to learn about ice fishing with Maine's Youth Fish and Game Association. Principal David Wilcox says the day is just as much about making memories as it is about education. You have kids in high school now that used to talk about this, and so it's just been good to bring this tradition back and really see kids utilize the resources we have. It's rooted in our in our system, and it should be in our school system, showing these kids how to use the land and really use our resources, and something like this has just been great to see. Kids were taught to set their own traps, use live bait, and recognize the types of fish they caught. While they waited for the flags on their traps to fly up, signaling a fresh catch, many took breaks to sled across the ice. However, one young ice fisherman stood by his line, hoping for a fish to take a bite just to set it free. I'm feeling great about this trip, but the, um, the previous one got away, so not good, and I'm still waiting. It takes a lot of time. Organizers of the day say it was once a story tradition in Milford, but had to be canceled the last few years due to COVID precautions. Getting ready for their first year back took nearly two months of planning. Now, teachers and parents say they want to hold the event every year moving forward. Um, we've had a few uh, great catches today, and kids have been really supportive and um, congratulating each other and you know, hoping that everyone's going to be able to catch something. It's a great experience for the kids. A lot of them have never been ice fishing before, so this is just a great day. It's beautiful out here. In Milford, David Ledford. 
ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Looks like they had a blast that's, getting outside. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I wish everybody could have that opportunity. Well, they do, in fact. This is a free fishing weekend, so you can go ice fishing. You don't yeah. need a license. Right. Um, as long as you haven't had it suspended, you can go out there and abide by all the other rules. So borrow a buddy's fishing traps and go out tomorrow. It'll be a great day to go ice fishing. A buddy. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure there's a Facebook group for that, too, if you just say, I I'm very nice and I return things in the same condition that yeah. I borrowed them. Somebody in. will let you do it. <laughs> Hey, speaking of the weather, let's take a look at that uh, the live feed coming out of Greenville Junction at this Ooh. hour. As you can see, it's already snowing there a little bit as the sun comes up there in Greenville. That almost looks like rain. Yeah, kind of. It's, it's that's what we're going to get. We're going to get yeah. a little snow, a little freezing rain, drizzle, kind of yeah. today. Um, so it's going to be a messy day ahead. For more on that, let's turn things over to Devin. All right, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast sponsored by the More True Team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. All right, winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories posted, both expiring at about 10 p.m. this evening. I was, I'm not surprised to see some of this upgraded to winter storm warnings. I was expecting it, honestly, because of the snow accumulation forecast that were expected there. And, of course, winter weather advisories here for a lot of this also for some ice concerns that will also be taking place. So I have to keep an eye on this as well. And active weather along the coast, we have small craft advisories and also gale warnings posted. And both of these will last until about 7 a.m. as we head towards just Saturday as well. Wave heights are active for now at around 2 to 4 feet, according to some of the buoys. You know, some spots up to 5 feet, so we might see this getting just a little bit more on the active side as the system begins to move in. The radar and satellite is quiet for now. We probably have had some precipitation already this morning, definitely in the northern ends of the state, which has started out as snow, and that will be continuing for a decent amount of time yet. So as we zoom things out, here is all the precipitation right here, tracking for the southwest to the north and east by about 9, maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll be watching this moving in, starting out maybe as rain for most of us, but temperatures will fall, so maybe some freezing rain and sleep possible before we transition to all snow as the afternoon progresses. And this is all courtesy of this area, low pressure right here that's tracking from the southwest, going toward the north and east, so we'll push this through and we'll calm things down tonight with high pressure to the north. That will clear the sky out later on tonight once the system clears. So future cast, we got snow going already. By about 9 to 10 o'clock, the frozen precipitation gets going. We'll see it switch over to snow during the afternoon period or so. By about 6, 7 o'clock, it starts to back off from northwest to southeast. And once we get to the, into the evening time frame, we'll start seeing the clouds breaking up overnight. So by Saturday morning, starting off with plenty of sunshine, so everything should recover after the frozen precipitation that we're seeing. Maybe a few passing clouds by Saturday evening. Then as we head towards early Sunday morning, maybe a few breaks in the clouds as well. So things will calm down just in time for the weekend. So here we are. So decent snowfall in the way, maybe up to 10 inches near the Caribou area before we're all finished up. Further down to the south, maybe one, two, maybe up to three inches in a few spots before we're all finished up as we start to transition to some snow. As for some ice concerns, uh, maybe a tenth to two tenths of an inch of ice before we're all finished up. So be ready for this. Roads will be slippery. Maybe some power outages in a few spots as a result of the ice. So definitely be careful out there today. So a forecast for today, 34 degrees. That wintry mix switching over to snow with that north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. By tonight, 8 degrees, partly cloudy, some snow showers early. The north wind gusting up to around 30 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, 30 degrees, a lot calmer, partly cloudy. The west wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended, extended forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Mostly cloudy on Sunday, highs in the lower 40s, upper 40s on Monday with a chance for rain, and partly cloudy Tuesday, highs in the upper 30s. Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop is now open in Newport. Our unique building is a converted 1800 single family home that we've given a new life to. A home for treasures, from antiques, collectibles, unique gifts, and so much more. Come make the rounds throughout the many rooms on all three floors as you wander back in time or find a unique gift that's perfect for that special someone or that hard to buy for a relative. So come visit us today, Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop, 147 Main Street, Newport.
At the Bangor Grand Hotel and Conference Center, you will discover a new dimension of comfort. We've got newly updated rooms, suites, and a new and improved lobby. Our Blue Sky Lounge and Restaurant features exceptional food, flavors, and service. We welcome the weary travelers, the sharp-dressed businessman, the overnight basketball tourney fans, and of course, families on their fun adventures. Many of our guests tell us we've become their home away from home. Moving forward is in our design here at the Bangor Grand, and we'll continue to improve on the things we do best, like exceeding your expectations. Did you know that an alpaca item is the most wish-listed gift idea? Stop searching for that perfect gift and start shopping for it at the Blue Alpaca in Belfast. It doesn't matter who's on your gift list, the Blue Alpaca has something for everyone with an incredible selection of alpaca socks, hats, sweaters, even stuffed animals and more. Shop in-store or online and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. Too much to choose from? Don't worry, the Blue Alpaca also offers gift cards. The Blue Alpaca, feel the difference. Find meaningful work in direct care, like Justin, who works with people who are brain injured in a residential care facility. Make sure you're compatible, because if you're going to be a DSP, you want to do it because you want to and enjoy it, not for a job. The right personality and character traits, in my opinion, to be a DSP is kind, caring, outgoing, and understanding. Visit mainjobs.care slash WFVX to learn more and make an impact through a compassionate career. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Now to the toxic train disaster in Ohio. Many residents are demanding independent testing of the water and soil as the weather threatens to complicate efforts to contain the pollution. The EPA, meanwhile, says the air and water is safe. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, people in East Palestine, Ohio, bracing for a new threat stemming from the toxic crash site where a Norfolk Southern train carrying vinyl chloride derailed two weeks ago. Fearing heavy rain could spread contamination, officials built up dams along the crash site. All families need to know that they are safe. The slow-moving chemical plume from a controlled burn at the site is expected to drift into West Virginia today. But the EPA says the contaminants are well below the 560 parts per billion that the CDC considers hazardous. The state of Ohio and EPA are working hand in hand. And if we say that the water is safe and the air is safe, uh, we believe it because we've tested it and the data shows it. But residents say they're skeptical and scared by mixed messages on water and air safety in the last two weeks. Some reporting sore throats, vomiting, and other symptoms. That train derailment happened just back there. And you look here, this is one of those gas monitors. And on the screen, it's zeros across the board. But you talk to residents in this neighborhood, and they'll tell you that if you spend an extended amount of time here, you're going to feel something. You don't bring families back with their kids and their loved ones, and then... Tell him to scrub with Dawn. Ohio's governor now calling for additional resources from the federal government. HHS and CDC crews now deploying. Meanwhile, in Michigan yesterday, another Norfolk Southern train derailment. The company saying no one was hurt and no chemicals were spilled. The number of toxic train derailments nationwide has been declining in recent years. Rail carriers have been involved in more than 13,000 hazardous material incidents since 2002. Norfolk Southern involved in 1,530 of those incidents, more than 100 of them classified as serious, including a 2005 derailment in South Carolina that released toxic chlorine gas. Nine people were killed. Well, in other news this morning, the death toll from New Zealand's cyclone reached eight today, with more than 4,500 people still missing. It has been the nation's most destructive weather event in decades, bringing widespread flooding, landslides, and power outages. Entire farms have been washed away, along with many bridges, roads, and homes. Cyclone Gabriel struck the country's north on Monday, and the level of damage has been compared to Cyclone Bola back in 1988. That storm was the most destructive on record in this nation of 5 million people. The area around the most populous city of Auckland has been hardest hit, and several communities remained isolated today. President Biden is directing his administration to come up with sharper rules to deal with unidentified objects. The director comes after the directive, excuse me, comes after the U.S. shot down three unidentified objects this past weekend. Fox's Madeline Rivera reports on the president's remarks from Washington. If any object presents a threat to the safety and security of the American people, I will take it down. 
What started off as a takedown of a suspected Chinese spy craft has ballooned into a larger effort by the Biden administration to hone their response to unmanned, unidentified objects. In his first extensive public remarks on the issue, President Biden says the decision to shoot down the Chinese balloon was justified. The violation of our sovereignty is unacceptable. Since then, the U.S. has shot down three other unidentified objects, which were potentially hazardous to civilian air traffic. The military search for debris from the Chinese balloon is wrapping up as recovery efforts for the three objects continue. But the president says those seem to have no connection to China. These three objects were most likely balloons tied to private companies, recreation or research institutions studying weather or conducting other scientific research. Still, his remarks likely won't appease his critics. I, I would characterize the president's press conference today as too little too late. As tensions over the balloon continue, China has sanctioned two U.S. defense companies for selling arms to Taiwan. President Biden says he expects a talk with President Xi Jinping about the Chinese balloon. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. When we return, we'll have your community calendar packed full of local events going on this weekend. We'll be right back. Let your creativity run free in the Creative Arts Center, where we offer fun and affordable activities for all ages. Birthday parties, pottery wheel classes, painting lessons, or just for the fun of it. Get fired up for glazing projects as well as acrylics. We offer a wide selection of ceramic products for you to choose from, and we have thousands of pieces ready to paint. We are a Paragon Kiln dealer and a Laguna Clay distributor. Stop by the Creative Arts Center today, located just off the Joshua Chamberlain Bridge in Brewer. The Creative Arts Center, where your only limitation is your imagination. Hey, Maine. How are you? Yes, you. How are you really? It's a question we rarely ask ourselves, but to Northern Light Health, how you are means a lot. So we're out here asking and encouraging you to ask the people in your life, starting with yourself. So ask away. Then connect with us at northernlighthealth.org slash how are you. Max True Value Hardware in Unity is the best option year round for all of your home improvement projects. Backed by one of the leading paint manufacturers in the United States, Max will color match or custom mix any color for you. We care about your pets too, carrying all of the essential pet products in our store. During those cold winters, we take the extra step to help with wood pellets ready to load on site. We also fill all size propane cylinders year round. Max True Value Hardware, we take pride in serving our community. Let us know how we can help you today. Luna Family Auto Sales is a locally owned business run by a husband and wife team. Here at Luna Family Auto Sales, we combine our passion for cars with providing service to the community and local economy. Featuring no dock or hidden fees at all, we offer financing for all credit types and service everything we sell. Check out our website at lunafamilyautosales.com. Or come in and say hi. We'd love to meet you and introduce ourselves. Luna Family Auto Sales, 649 Stillwater Ave, Old Town. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Friday, February 17th, 2023. Today is also Random Act of Kindness Day. It all began in, what is that, 1995, mm -hmm. read it, when a Colorado nonprofit organization came up with the idea. It's meant to inspire people to perform small acts of kindness to brighten someone's day. They don't have to be significant acts, and they don't have to accomplish much. Just do something to brighten someone's day. Maybe buy somebody coffee in the line behind yeah. you. Some little things like that. I yeah. like to do those things myself sometimes, and it does more for me than it does for them, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. It helps get you out of your head if you're kind of in a rut. I right. think doing something else for somebody else just helps you feel a little better about Lift yourself your spirits as well. too. Right, it's good yeah. for everybody. Well, on this day in history, in 1863, the International Red Cross was founded in Geneva. In 1817, a street in Baltimore became the first to be lighted with gas from America's first gas company. America's first street light. Yeah. yeah crazy. And then they had they had to have a, a job specifically for the street lighters. Right. That's always fascinating to yeah. me. The jobs that have changed over the years. Yeah. Very cool. And in 1990, East Germany announced it would tear down a 600-foot section of the Berlin Wall. And then eventually it all came down. Right. Today's birthdays include pop star Ed Sheeran, who is 32. What a talented guy he is. Mm -hmm. Basketball great Michael Jordan is 60. Mm -hmm. 
socialite and performer Paris Hilton is 42, and comedian Daniel Whitney is 59. He's best known as Larry the Cable Guy. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, not a, he's not a real Larry. He's Nobody a Dan. knows his name. You know, yeah. they know him as Larry the Cable Guy. He's a Dan. He looks like a he's Dan. He's a Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And Paris Hilton just had a baby, I think. Did she? Yeah. She's so much different than that TV show yeah. um, showed her to be. It's yeah. funny. Well, happy birthday to all of them. Happy birthday. If to they them. were in Maine today, they would be having some messy weather because that's what we're dealing with. Yep. Yep. I know. Schools have canceled because of it, and yep. we haven't seen any of it yet, so it's interesting. But Devin Biggs has all the details. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Friday. Your first weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Alrighty, here we are. Active weather moving in. We have winter storm warnings. I was kind of wondering they would upgrade some of this to a winter storm warning in the northern ends of the state, and they have. And this is up until about 10 p.m. for accumulating snow and some ice as well. Winter weather advisory is also posted until 10 p.m. for these areas here. Also for ice, that will be moving in. And a little bit of snow along the coast. We also have small craft advisories and gale warnings posted until Saturday morning at about 7 a.m. or so for winds that will be moving in. For now, we're quiet, and that's not going to stay that way. We're going to be watching for that wintry mix that will be filling in as the morning progresses on. So we're in that quiet stretch now with snow in the northern ends of the state. We're watching the precipitation starting to fill in from the southwest to the north and east. So as the morning progresses on, we'll be watching this all beginning to fill in. So by about 9 to 10 o'clock, this will all get going and switch over to snow during the afternoon period. By early evening, we'll start to see this taper off and the sky clearing out overnight tonight with a lot of sunshine to start things off for your Saturday. So your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. So a lot of this gets going by about 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning with temperatures in the 30s. So the precipitation will become frozen by the afternoon period as temperatures fall. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. All right, and that's all we have time for right now. We're going to head it over to sports and we'll be right back. Why should your new floor come from Carpet One? Because we're passionate about the spaces our neighbors call home. We're part of your community, and we're also part of the world's largest cooperative of independently owned and operated flooring stores. So you can be sure you'll get great selection and outstanding value with every installation. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl, our experts take the guesswork out of choosing the right floor. We're your local Carpet One Floor and Home, the one store for your perfect floor. Welcome back to the National Window Showdown. It's now time for our expert picks. My pick is Renewal by Anderson. Their customer service is exceptional, trustworthy, professional. Renewal by Anderson has to be the pick for me. I love Renewal by Anderson for this too, Brian. They take care of the entire process from consultation to installation and beyond. They're second to none. Guys, for me, it's the Fibrex. It's a no-brainer. Renewal by Anderson takes it to the house. A clean sweep for Renewal by Anderson. They really are the better way to a better window. Let's celebrate winter by spending the day outdoors. Join us at Herundo Wildlife Refuge for our winter fun day. Saturday, March 4th from 10 till 2 for a day of activities you won't want to miss, including ice sculpting and the popular ice fishing with Hooked on Fishing program. Have you ever wanted to enter a biathlon or try your hand at curling or snowshoeing? Now is your chance. Enjoy food and drink while visiting activity booths. Learn more about nature and some of the signs of the season. For tickets and more information, go to herundomain.org. All the nonsense. Fibber, fibber. Meets no nonsense. I don't buy it. Judge Judy. Weekdays at 5 on ABC 7. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. It is tournament time, and yesterday we showed all of the finalized girls' brackets. Well, the boys wrapped up their preliminary action, and now all of those boys' brackets are official, and the tournament is ready for tip. Let's roll them. Starting with Class AA, Bangor is at Oxford Hills in that 1-8 matchup. Lewiston hosts Edward Little. Portland hosts Wyndham. And then on Friday, Hamden and Cheveris go at it in that 4-5 matchup. And these will continue with the semifinals next Thursday 
the cross insurance arena in Portland. For Class A North, those quarterfinals are at Augusta. They play Saturday in the evening session. Skowhegan and Lawrence kick us off, followed by Nokomis and Mesolonsky. Mount Blue and Coney have the third game, and then Brewer Boys and Camden Hills finish us off Saturday night. Let's go to Class B now. Orno and Caribou kick us off at 3. Kick us off there at the Cross Center on Friday night, followed by Winslow and Presque Isle. And then they continue on Saturday with Old Town and Foxcroft at the 4-5. And Unbe and Ellsworth taking on Washington Academy to wrap up those quarters. Class C boys get going on Monday. Dexter is the 3 and Lee is the 6. That's at 7 p.m. Followed by Fort Kent and George Stevens at 8.30. All of those quarters wrap up on Tuesday, starting with Woodland and Fort Fairfield. And then Callis and Penobscot Valley, that 1-8 matchup. In Class D now, they get underway on Saturday night with Skank and Katahdin, followed by Machias and Wisdom. And then that resumes Monday at noon with Bangor Christian and Easton, followed by Southern Aroostook, the defending champs, and Jonesport Beals. And as always, you can find all of these brackets up to date online at foxbangor.com slash brackets. Let's move on now back to the girls' sides of things. Up in Howland, the Penobscot Valley Howlers are gearing up for the Class C North Tournament as the number two seed. The Howlers are 17-1, and, and they are one of the top teams in a stacked Class C North field. Their signature is defense, and that is, what, uh, that is what's most to thank for their record right now. Their opponents are scoring just 24 points a game, and Penobscot is outscoring those opponents by 34 on average. And head coach Nate Case says the key to their success on the floor is how hard they work and how tough it is to game plan for them. It's just a lot of work to play that defense, and we've almost ramped it up this year a bit more that we, we press a lot more than last year. I don't think anyone can replicate uh, the length to try to practice for our defense, and, and so that's a big advantage. Yeah, it's really hard to scout that length. The Howlers are looking to win their first gold ball in school history, and when they have to compete against teams like Dexter, the top team, Central, Hodgden, Matanawcook Academy, they know they have to bring their A game on all sides. We just have to keep working hard and practice. I mean, that's where we're going to get better, just practicing, being intense, communicating, and staying together and being positive as a team. So we just got to keep putting in the hard work every day in practice. I know it sucks. Like, it really does suck sometimes, but that's what's going to pay off. Hard work is what gets you there. We'll have more on the Howlers as we highlight them in our Hardwood Spotlight on Friday. All right, let's head to some action. Double A quarterfinals have really been going on all week. And on Thursday night, Bangor hosted Deering with a trip to the semis on the line. The Rams of Bangor, the number two team in the north, Rams of Deering, trying to pull off the upset. Second half, we start with Bangor up. Emmy Streams is going to get it here from Abby Quinn. She's got room, so she stops, pops, and buries the long range, too. And then here she is again. It streams too quick on the first step. She finishes with the left and one. Daring would fight, though. Maya Gale drives. She kicks to Shea Rosenthal. She gets in the lane for two for the bucket there. And then it's this tandem again. It's Rosenthal driving, kicking to find Gale. And she's going to finish that one for two. But Bangor was all over the place. Here's Cassidy Ireland to Abby Quinn. She finishes through the foul. That is tough right there. The Rams allow just eight points in the second half. Here's all three of their captains on what worked and what's next. Uh, we really prioritized like switching on defense and switching quickly and communicating the switches on defense. So I think that's really what changed. I think defensively we're at our best and when we turn it up a notch, I think we changed the game a lot. Well, we got nothing to lose. We're just going to give 100% effort and yeah, come on with it. All right, good luck to them there in the semis. On to some golf news now. It's almost that time, and the field continues to grow at the first annual Drive for Kids charity golf tournament. This coming June, some of sports and entertainment's biggest stars will be teeing it up at Falmouth Country Club and all for a great cause. The star-studded field will now include former Red Sox great Derek Lowe, who was here in Portland on Thursday. Lowe, a member of that magical 2004 Sox team that ended the title drought, reversed the curse. He's been an avid golfer for many years. More celebrities will be added throughout the spring. Proceeds will benefit the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital. And earlier, Derek said he's excited about getting the chance to reunite with some of his former teammates, including Tim Wakefield and the very personable Kevin Millar. He talks as much on the golf course as he does in the studio and, and off the course. But, and that's also one of the beautiful things for us, too, is to be able to see some of our old friends again. Um, camaraderie's great. And, and again, it's just it's something that I give everyone so much credit for um, you know, 
putting on this event, and we look forward to coming back in June. One of the heroes of that Game 7 ALCS game, Johnny Tame and the other. Let's stay on the hardwood now, and we'll stay in Boston. The Celtics are officially removing the interim tag from Joe Missoula, and they'll elevate him to the team's official head coach. In a press release on Thursday, the Celtics named Missoula the 19th head coach in franchise history and agreed upon a contract extension, although the terms of which have not been disclosed. So Missoula officially replaces Ime Udoka as the team's head coach. The Celtics right now have the best record in the NBA heading into the All-Star break break at 42 and 17. Missoula was named coach of Team Giannis at this year's All-Star Game. Only the third first-year head coach to lead an All-Star team. He now becomes the league's youngest head coach. And I got to personally know Joe's late father, Dan, during one of my in internships working in the rec center he built. I watched his younger brother, Justin, play in high school and college. It's happy for the whole Missoula family here, a great group of people. That's all the time we have for sports, though. Be right back after the break. Bath fitter is a better way to remodel your tub. Precise measuring means the perfect fit. The bath fitter tub over tub process means no mess or stress. A custom made tub and seamless wall mean a watertight fit. Premium acrylic means it lasts a lifetime. And all this together means a great value. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose, with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. So you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power, control your life. Visit Generac.com. The Farmer's Table in Corinna brings you outstanding breakfasts, lunches, and dinners made from farm-grown fresh ingredients. Dinner specials are available every day. Enjoy our homemade desserts, and above all, bring your appetite to the Farmer's Table in Corinna. With Flonase, allergies don't have to be scary. Spray Flonase Sensimus daily for non-drowsy, long-lasting relief in a scent-free gentle mist. Flonase, all good. Now for a look at what's happening this weekend throughout the community.
Now, in other news this morning, the IRS says so far this year about 19 million people have already filed their taxes. The agency says the average refund amount is $1,963. The IRS data as of February 3rd shows roughly 2.3 million people have filed their taxes in 2023 compared to last year in a report. A financial analyst says more people may be filing earlier this year in hopes of getting a refund check sooner. Although I think I, they say that every year, don't they? I think so, too. Yeah. I haven't filed my taxes yet. So. Yeah, me either. I'm I a, have an appointment. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. I, I don't even have that yet. But We're close. We'll We're get getting there. there. We're getting All there. right, one last check of the forecast. Here's Devin Biggs. All right, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. All right, winter storm warnings. Winter weather advisories posted, both expiring at about 10 p.m. this evening. I was, I'm not surprised to see some of this upgraded to winter storm warnings. I was expecting it, honestly, because of the snow accumulation forecast that were expected there. And, of course, winter weather advisories here for a lot of this also for some ice concerns that will also be taking place. So I'll have to keep an eye on this as well. And active weather along the coast. We have small craft advisories and also gale warnings posted. And both of these will last until about 7 a.m. as we head towards your Saturday as well. Wave heights are active for now at around 2 to 4 feet, according to some of the buoys. You know, in some spots up to 5 feet. So we might see this getting just a little bit more on the active side as the system begins to move in. The radar and satellite is quiet for now. We probably have had some precipitation already this morning. Definitely in the northern ends of the state, which has started out as snow. And now we'll be continuing for a decent amount of time yet. So as we zoom things out, here is all the precipitation right here, tracking from the southwest to the north and east by about 9, maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll be watching this moving in, starting out maybe as rain for most of us, but temperatures will fall, so maybe some freezing rain and sleep possible before we transition to all snow as the afternoon progresses. And this is all courtesy of this area, low pressure right here that's tracking from the southwest, going toward the north and east, so we'll push this through and we'll calm things down tonight with high pressure to the north. That will clear the sky out later on tonight once the system clears. So future cast, we got snow going already. By about 9 to 10 o'clock, the frozen precipitation gets going. We'll see it switch over to snow during the afternoon period or so. By about 6, 7 o'clock, it starts to back off from northwest to southeast. And once we get to the end of the evening time frame, we'll start seeing the clouds breaking up overnight. So by Saturday morning, starting off with plenty of sunshine, so everything should recover after the frozen precipitation that we're seeing. Maybe a few passing clouds by Saturday evening. Then as we head towards early Sunday morning, maybe a few breaks in the clouds as well. So things will calm down just in time for the weekend. So here we are. So decent snowfall in the way, maybe up to 10 inches near the Caribou area before we're all finished up. Further down to the south, maybe one, two, maybe up to three inches in a few spots before we're all finished up as we start to transition to some snow. As for some ice concerns, uh, maybe a tenth to two tenths of an inch of ice before we're all finished up. So be ready for this. Roads will be slippery. Maybe some power outages in a few spots as a result of the ice. So definitely be careful out there today. So a forecast for today, 34 degrees. That wintry mix switching over to snow with that north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. By tonight, 8 degrees, partly cloudy, some snow showers early. The north wind gusting up to around 30 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, 30 degrees, a lot calmer, partly cloudy. The west wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended, extended forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Mostly cloudy on Sunday, highs in the lower 40s, upper 40s on Monday with a chance for rain, and partly cloudy Tuesday, highs in the upper 30s. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovation supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. Dave Matthews Band Live. Friday, June 16th, Maine Savings Amphitheater, Bangor, Maine. On sale Friday at 10 a.m. at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. 
Pre-order the new album, Walk Around the Moon, now. Bucksport Regional Health Center has cared for the community for almost 50 years. We are trusted and compassionate providers. We have also given thousands of COVID-19 vaccines. Because the COVID-19 vaccine is very safe, very effective, and your best shot at protecting yourself from COVID. Trust us. Trust the vaccine. Protect yourself. Take your shot against COVID-19. Every night is pizza night at Dragonfire Pizza from wings, salads, and sides to our specialty wood-fired pizzas. You'll find everything you need to satisfy any craving by the slice or by the pie. A little slice of heaven is waiting for you at Dragonfire Pizza, Mill Mall, Ellsworth. So, what did you say you'd do again? Can you be in love with someone you're lying to? The Backwoods Veterans Foundation is putting on its fourth annual snowmobile ride Friday and Saturday, or today and tomorrow, excuse me, up at Pittston Farm in Rockwood. The foundation was started by Sean Mills, who had a vision to give back to some friends that were veterans. Some of them were dealing with medical issues like PTSD, and he wanted to give them a weekend where they could enjoy a, no, a nice snowmobile ride and the greatness that Maine brings this time of year. If I have any avenue at all to give back, this is, this is the way I can do it, and I'm happy I'm able to at least give them two days of an experience out of their normal day and, and take them into the woods and show them some sort of appreciation. You know, I, I've i been doing this for four years and I see the smile on their face when they get here and I see the bigger smile when they leave. The ride has grown thanks to great participation from the community and more than 40 sponsors. They also have a silent auction and fireworks going on as part of the weekend. So far, they have donated seven snowmobiles with full sets of gear and complete lodging for some veterans that have participated in the ride. Sean wants any veteran to know if they would like to come up for the ride, get in touch with him at Pittston Farm, and he will find a way to get you a ride and take care of everything you need while you're there. Oh, what a great effort. Wow. I love to hear that. That is extremely yeah. generous. And I just think it's so awesome. If you're struggling with mental health stuff yeah. or anything, having a community and like meeting new people and being able to talk about stuff is important. Yeah. Or not even yeah. talking about it, just having fun. Just go out and have fun. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. And that right. area is just perfect for it, too. I've gone snowmobiling up there around Rockwood before. And, right. you know, it's nice trails through the woods. And, right. And that's pretty healing in itself. You get out and do some physical activities, yeah. some nice fresh air. You get outside, you talk to people. You're just with people. Yeah. I think that's a, the best possible thing you could yeah. do. What a nice thing to do. So, so get, generous. Yeah, again, if you're interested, get in touch with them up there. and maybe Pittston you can, Farm. You yep. can join the fun this weekend, too. Yeah, sounds so. good. It starts today. Well, if you missed anything, you can head to foxbangor.com. Next hour, around mm -hmm. around later in the show, we'll have mm -hmm. an interview guest talking about the Chocolate Festival. Ooh, so, a Chocolate Festival. Yes, I like that. Yeah, Where's that happening? I don't know. You don't know? We'll have to find out about <laughs> it. All right. Well, we'll continue. Uh, actually, Good Morning America is next on this channel, but yeah. we'll continue broadcasting on Fox 22 for the next couple of hours yeah. so you can learn about that chocolate festival along with me. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. One, one of my favorite subjects. Yeah. Happy Friday, everyone. Have a good day. Have a good day. It's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. Welcome back to the National Window Showdown. It's now time for our expert picks. My pick is Renewal by Anderson. Their customer service is exceptional, trustworthy, professional. Renewal by Anderson has to be the pick for me. I love Renewal by Anderson for this too, Brian. They take care of the entire process from consultation to installation and beyond. They're second to none. Guys, for me, it's the Fibrex. It's a no-brainer. Renewal by Anderson takes it to the house. A clean sweep for Renewal by Anderson. They really are the better way to a better window. When a governor wanted to increase sales in his...